so we're here with Andrew at Ross Motorsports. We just rolled in here with the boat. So you're going to walk me through what I need to know as a new Bass Cat owner and what we'll talk a little bit about the options we've added to the boat. We did some of that at the factory, but why don't you just walk us through uh, the boat? Well, we, we normally always go to the very back transom of the boat. So Ken, let's go back here. Of course, we do have Hank on the camera today. So you might hear me refer to him. Hammer Hank. So, of course, you've had the V8 Mercury, you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Dipstick under the cowling. You, do you do the services yourself? Heck no. Okay, so It'll be back here. we'll get to see you whenever time comes. Now, the first part you do need to notice is our fuel switch for our fuel tanks is right here on our transit. Okay. So, being that I know you've been in Rangers for a long time, probably your, yeah, what, a Z21? Mm -hmm. It had multiple tanks. No, it was a single tank. It was a single tank. Yep. Thing yep. Well, I know that some of the older ones had the multi-tanks, so you do have the switch there. Right now, we do have it on off. We'll switch it up to the left whenever we get some gas in the boat. Now, this boat did just come from Basscat, so we do not have any trolling batteries in it. You got nothing except a crank nothing. battery it and does. a charger. Now, our, our boats do come with a cranking battery, so this is a 31 series AGM cranking battery. Of course, we got our battery trays here for a trolling motor. By the way, guys, you remember, this is something I was huge about, is those trays. I mean, that battery's not moving anywhere. That's the coolest tray of anybody we looked at. And, sorry to interrupt you, Andrew. Another thing I noticed was, if you remember in the ballistic video, it had those bilges you could pop out real quick. It's the same thing. It's those same bilges. So I'll get with the guys here at Ross, and I will carry a spare pump with them. Oh, definitely. Because if you get trash in one or one shorts out on you, you can pop them out just in a heartbeat. And something that Bass Cat does is these are Mercury Quick Connects. They're pin connectors. If you, say you didn't have a spare bilge pump and you, you your main aerator pump went out, you know, that's a very critical pump. You can pull the pump out of the pump out and switch it right into it. Or you oh, can yeah. pull one bilge pump and switch it over to the other. So they are all the same. Now some of them have different gallons per hour on them, depending on what the pump sure. does, what its job. But they do all interchange. But no, they are a good pump system. So of course we do have our cranking battery. Now on top of our cranking battery is our master power switch. This controls everything but the engine. The engine is hooked directly to the battery. And then right here, this is your master power switch for power pole. So we flip that on. Hold on, let me come around. Here. So, Andrew, do I leave that on or off? No, sir. Whenever you get done, get done fishing, you get off the water. I would definitely turn all your switches off. That way, you don't have a constant drain. So I've got that one, that one, and I've got a trolling motor switch somewhere. Yes, sir. The trolling motor switch is going to be directly on top of the trolling motor batteries. Since we okay. went to Minn Kota Old Tricks, I normally don't turn that off. I just turn my trolling motor off. Okay. Uh, but of course, you know, we're going to have jumper cables between all the batteries. That way everything's in a series for 36 volt. Your power pole pumps are over there on the side. You see them blinking since we turned the, turned the switch on. Now your battery charger is mounted on the transom. We also have, here's your plug for your charger. It's where you can plug in your battery charger. Okay. You can see the charger oh, yeah, right okay, there on the transom. Yep, yep. Now, when you do put your batteries in it, depending on what batteries you go with, you do need to set up your Minn Kota charger for them. Jones will do all that yep. for us. So he can, he can set it up to where you know, it knows if you're but a full Ross can sale. do that too, right? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, we do do that on all of our boats now. Probably in the last two years, we've had a lot of customers requesting that we don't furnish trolling motor batteries uh, because they're going lithium. So there are some customers that provide their own batteries. I don't trust them yet. It's kind of Ford Chevy Dodge argument, you yep, know. Yep. Well, actually, it would be Ford Chevy Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Would be the argument. So, what are my tank sizes? Now, this boat should have two 32 gallon tanks. Holy smokes. Yeah. These are 32. Some of the original Lynxes had 30 gallon aluminum tanks in it. Uh, but this one has the new 32 gallons, so you hold 64 gallons of gas. So, if, I'm, if I leave the boat at the lake, I turn the if I turn that switch off, I'm, my power poles are dead. They're not yes. draining me. Okay. Yes, sir. All you got to do is turn it off right here, and you're gonna see the blinking quit. And I'm also not gonna touch the switch without a hat around my neck going down the road and drop them down. <laughs> or yes. if you have like the push, if you have the push buttons up front, I've seen a couple of times where guys' poles will actually hit that when you're going down the road, yep. and it'll deploy it. your 
yep. pull your. Uh, and that's a good point. Before we leave, I want to talk. So I've got my, my my monster switch up front. Are y'all? Do you like to do them on one side or split them over either side of the trolling motor? Everybody's different. Yeah, I've had mine on the left side under my trolling motor. Just down, so watch your hands. Good latches. So okay. from there, Ken, you want to climb up in the boat, or how do we want to yeah. do this? By the way, I love the steps on the trailer hand. Uh, so, by the way, that's Ryan, you guys. Also the raw motor board. Uh, you know, I, so I got the old man steps on the front of the boat, which I love. But this morning, so I had this boat at my shop this morning. Actually, you'll see my rods are in here. It's the only thing that's in here, my rods and my tools. But uh, I love the steps because you can get in the boat so much easier. You really can't do that on my Ranger trailer. No, sir. Get in the boat. Okay. Let's come down here to the sit line. Can you sit there? Doesn't matter. So you do have a master power switch here beside your console. Okay. So since the back of the boat's turned on, we're going to flip that switch on. What that does is that turns on power for our touch panel. Our touch panel, we have our air rate. So air rate pumps water from the lake through the spray bars into the live well. So if you click it once, it puts it on manual. You can turn it to five minutes. This is five minutes between the cycle. The cycle lasts for one minute. Okay. Or you can click it over to three. So what it'll do, it'll go three minutes, run for a minute. It'll wait three minutes, run for another minute. Okay. Now here is also pump in. So say you catch your first fish of the morning, you have no water in your live well. You can click both them on and it's gonna fill that live well up twice as fast. Now it actually pumps enough water in that live well that it will flood because the overflow can't keep up. So that is one thing to remember. Turn. I'll say that again. So it will. If I don't turn it back off, it'll. It it'll overpower it's so the fast. overflow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And you'll see it coming out of the lids. Uh, but that is something. You ain't never done that, have you? I've done it more than <laughs> I want to admit. You can hear. You can be up on the front deck and you hear this trickling sound. Sounds like a right. waterfall in your boat. But the thing about that, the reason why we have two ways to pump water into the live well, say this air rate goes out in the middle of a tournament. You can you have the pump in, you have a way to get water in your live well, and then we go here to recirculate. So recirculate turns the water that is in the live well. Same, it's just like the air rate, you can put it on manual. You can click it again, it puts it on five, that's gonna be five minutes between cycles. Or click it here and that puts it on three, that's gonna be three minutes per, between the cycles. Now you can run air rate on top of recirculate, because we have two different sets of spray bars in our live well. I saw that. So it, it will definitely turn a lot of water if you have both of them run separately. So there's your two different spray bars in there. So I want to make sure I understand. Does aeration put water in the in the in the well? Yes. Sir. Okay, so I don't have to put pump on if I turn the aerator. On. Yes, sir. Okay. You can do aerate only. Okay. So normally during the springtime, when the water temperatures are a little bit cooler. Uh, most people they'll just put it on aerate and it. let it run that that way you keep fresh Probably water put it coming on three in. minutes and go yes sir. and yeah. everybody has a different way of running their live wheels and then pump out so there's no more valves to pull or anything like that when you click the pump out it pumps water out of the live wheel it's a separate pump okay uh, so if you know midday you need to put some fresh water in your live wheel you can click pump in and pump out same time one's oh, going to be okay, pumping yeah. water in the other one's going to be pumping water Got out it. Then here is our fan system that circulates air under the front deck. And I think, does it, doesn't it run for like 15 minutes to automatically shut off? Yes, sir. It, the, the fan system is on a timer. Uh, now, we do recommend, you know, once you get to the house, you know, open all your boxes, cool it out. Everybody has a different... Get rid of the mildew. Yes, everybody has a different way of doing it. Fan, shop fans. Uh, we're going to skip the security system, but all of our premium boats are equipped with a security system from the factory. Here we have accessory one. So if I hit, if that's on and somebody pops a box out, it goes to hot. The alarm's gonna go off. Okay, yes. good. Now here we have accessory one. Accessory one turns on our headlight. Yep, we talked about that with Phil. That's wicked cool. And it's it's brighter than you think it it's is. It's unbelievable, yeah. He turned his on on me one morning. And then here we have accessory two. Accessory two lights up, oh. or lighted handrails. Oh, check it out, that's cool. Lights up underneath the console. And then if you want to, let's double check, open your live wheels, it should turn on the live wheel lights also. Yep. Okay, so we got our accessory one, accessory two, now our bilge pump. 
this boat is equipped with an automatic pump if you turn it on. So right now we do not have heat. We do not have a bilge pump, automatic bilge pump turned on. If your boat was to fill full of water, it'd be full of water. The reason why is if that float switch hangs, you know, a piece of plastic up. gets in it, yep. it'd burn up the bilge pumps. Yep. So that is something that you have your manual bilge pump to where you can turn it on, it'll kick on the pumps. Or we can click it over here to auto. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna leave your boat in the water overnight, you know, say you're camping somewhere, you can pull up to the beach, click it over on auto. That way when the boat does get, if it get rains and get water in the boat, it'll kick the pump on automatically. Mm -hmm. Whenever you click it, it turns it off. Now this is the gauge for fuel tanks. You have a left and a right. Now remember this controls the gauge only. Mm -hmm. You actually have to go to the Got back it. of the boat to switch the tanks. Right. Now you, your boat is equipped. This is something you made sure you ordered on your boat. Is the Mercury Smartcraft gauge. Peeling the plastic I'm off. Peel the plastic mm -hmm. off for you. Kill, if your kill switch is pulled, it makes all the beeping noises. Mm -hmm. uh, but there you can see your mercury gauge. Now, did you have the mercury smart craft gauge on your last? I did. Boat? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm familiar with it. So you're familiar how you can go through everything now. Too many hours are on my motor. This one. No hours. hours yes, point so they zero. just cranked it to the factory to make sure it ran. Yeah. So that's going to be the mercury deal. Now you got 12.9 volts, so we got a good hot battery underneath us. But there's several settings you can change on that. Now some of it is going to be redundant information. Yep. Yep. Because uh, we did put the water pressure gauge, mm -hmm. the trim switch. You guys know I was big on wanting analog gauges. And then we have our fuel tanks there. Yep. We did equip this boat with Bob's hydraulic jack plate, mm -hmm. all one piece construction jack plate. And then we got our and I got fancy. There. I had it uh, powder coated black to match the boat. It too, so. makes it look good. And it also makes it to where it doesn't show the scum line as easy. Oh, does it? Yeah, it makes it a little bit easier. And you guys may notice that's not really finished because one of two things happens. Because uh, we were talking about this at the factory, we didn't get on camera because it was so noisy. You either you usually cut a hole there, right, and put a graph in there, or what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a bracket over the top of that, which will be my two. So we're going to run Humminbird and Garmin both. We're going to run Humminbird for mapping and we're going to run Garmin for down and side imaging. So that's what's going to be set up here. Now the only thing I don't like about the dash setup is going to be I'm going to cover some of this. So, but again, unless you want your dash to be yay wide, there's no other way to do that. So, but I'll be able to sell that, see these, I'll be able to see my fuel gauge and I'll be able to look around and see those. But we'll, once we get the boat rigged, we'll show you what that looks like as well. And then we're going to go back to our panel. Oh, so here on the side we have our nav lights. Now on this boat the front nav light is built in. That's awesome. Uh, the rear light is in your rod box over on the side. Click it again, turns on just the anchor. And then click it again, turns everything off. And then I'm going to honk the horn. <laughs> so we do have a good horn in this boat. It's right there on the dash. Uh, pretty simplistic. You have your trim on one side, tail flex for the jack plate on the other side. And you guys see, I went dual console. It's removable. We're going to show you all how to do that later. But Ryan, you said, how many dual consoles have you seen? There hasn't been many. I mean, we've sold, what, 100 and something brand new bass cats in the last four or five years. And I think we've seen, what, three? Probably yeah. two or three. Three of the I mean, removable dual consoles. A lot of, yeah, the removable ones. A lot of people just don't do it. And it's a, it's a neat feature. I mean, it's it an is. added option. Well, I mean, look, in the summer, who cares? Yep. But in January on Rayburn or Toledo when it's 34 and raining, it's so nice to have. And it, there's a ton of space underneath it. So it's just three levers that Bass Cat's designed. And we'll show you how that pops out. I don't want to do it today because we're going to put the cover on it and drag it back to Dallas. But uh, it's cool. And I'm, I'm really pleased. And also, you might talk about we don't have the windshields on it yet. No, sir. So when Bass Cat ships the boat, they ship them with a shipping cover. It's a real low profile shipping cover. They do not come with the windshields on the boat. Now the Lynx only has one windshield. Uh, some of the different model premium boats, you have the option of having a small windshield or a large windshield. Uh, but your windshield should be in this box. Ta-da. So that is, two. that is how they ship them. And it comes with both windshields right there. And you're ready to put them on your dash and yep. let you rock and roll. Now, one of the things I like, and, and it, it, it's been weird to me about this boat, is the rod box is in the middle, right? And by the way, it holds a bunch of rods. So it, I don't have it full yet. I've still got a bunch of spaces in there. But what I like about this, as I've played with it, 
and and Phil pointed this out to me is when I'm doing tackle so this was my tackle box the big box for me and my Ranger if I'm sitting but because I've run the dual console if I'm sitting between my consoles I can't get in my box mm -hmm. well I get my rods out I'm usually done for the day now I got my tackle to either side of me so I can sit here and work on my stuff and I like the idea that it's a smaller box so when it's raining I don't have just you know I'm not just filling the boat full of water in the rain so I've really kind of adapted to like the idea of a center rod box and it's just going to be something I have to get used to but I think it's a cool idea. Big net storage in there, great idea, great idea. And then on the links, this is, uh, the links is that I had, this is my designated Alabama rig storage. Is that what you keep in there? Because <laughs> there's no good way to store mm -hmm. an Alabama rig. Right. But I left it there and I always kept my life jackets on this side. And then you do know that we have the designated place to put your yep. insurance card, your registration card. And then they're going to put the, the seat pedestal. Mm -hmm. They have it in the box here also. That pedestal will be brand new for whoever buys this boat <laughs> next, I think. And by the way, we talked about this before. One of the things I really liked about this boat was you got lights on the dash and every one of them has its own switch. So you don't have to completely light the boat up to see when you're getting ready to take off in the morning. And whenever you open the lid, you see how the light came on there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I did, yes. It comes on automatically. Yes. That's handy. Okay. What else? We're going to come up here to the bow. So up here at the very front, we have a mast there. You see that you have this <laughs> the switch here on the side. This switch here is the master power switch for the bow of the boat. Okay. Turn it off. So if you're sight fishing, you're all over the very nose of your boat. By turning it off, your trim switches do not work. So you can be all over the nose of this boat trying to get that angle to see a fish. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting something. Excellent. Now, when you do turn the switch on, you see we have our, our nav lights are here. Mm -hmm. You can turn your nav lights on and off from the bow. You have your battery check, which we do not have trolling motor batteries. So your, your little volt gauge here does not work right now because we don't have any trolling motor batteries. And then you got- But up, it actually has a trip. gauge on the front to check it. Yes, sir. Okay. So when you're fishing through the day, you can check it, see, make sure everything's going good. Another thing I like about it is whenever I plug my boat in to charge at night, I'll walk by the front of my boat, click my switch, and it'll show 42 volts. Uh, and it just shows that the charger is actually charging all your trolling batteries. Okay. But that is something I like. Now, when y'all get into the nitty gritties of rigging, you'll probably, you, are you going to move your pedal back? Absolutely. Move your, I'm sliding back. Move your trolling motor pedal about back. What you're about there. So this is a block here that you okay. can pull this block out of the boat. You can move your trolling motor pedal back. And that, it's one screw is holding it in. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's one quarter. Yeah, that's a little far forward for me, and I like having my foot on either side of the of the motor. Yes. So, and uh, and that's a just a different. balance thing. I mean, Hank could do it easy. For me, it's a lot harder just because I'm old and I got a bad hip. But <laughs> I want to be able to stand on either side of it. But no, you can move it back. There is going to be an access panel underneath here uh, for whenever you go to rigging your graphs. Now, everybody has different mounts. Everybody has a preference when it comes to putting the graphs on the front of the boat. You do have your your wires here. This is going to be two eight gauge wires. These go to the dash. Underneath the dash, it's gonna hook up with six gauge and go back to the transom. Okay. So you do have designated electronics wiring okay. system. Remember at the factory, he also showed us how they had strengthened these bolts. So there's those bolts that Rick talked about. And, and th if that's in a future video, if we haven't talked about that yet, he actually had these bolts custom made to make them stronger to mount that trolling motor to the front of the boat. Hank, hit that light on the front if you would. That'll light you up. And then let's look at the back lights y'all were talking about. Okay, so we got lights back here. We got LED, LED. And where's that bottom one? Is it down? Oh, it's actually on the hull. It looks good pre-dawn. Reverse lights? Yeah, but we can't light them up. So 
Uh, we talk about them 18 inch bangers, baby. Yeah. yeah. yeah we got, we got <laughs> beautiful wheel. And actually, that was one of the big concerns when I ordered this boat. Uh, and and they, they didn't have wheels. And so those wheels apparently just showed up in the last couple of weeks. They're really cool looking. Uh, got the bass catfish emblem on, 18 inch. So let's talk a little bit about uh, motor warranties. Mm -hmm. So what is a what does a Mercury come with now? So a Mercury 250 Pro XS comes standard with a standard three year warranty. You can add warranty to it. You can add a gold warranty, or we always recommend to add the platinum. If you're going to add a warranty to the engine, definitely get the platinum. That's what I've always done. It covers more components of the engine. Well, and look, look, I just sold a 2018 Ranger that's in warranty till 2026. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that guy's got a great deal because he's still got five years left on warranty. And that is one thing. So you can add up to five years of platinum on top of the three years of standard. Exactly what I've total, done. Every, it's what we'll do on this one. Total eight years. So that really, you know, people keep these boats. It adds value to it. I was going to say, keep in mind as well that, that the platinum warranty is just like the manufacturer's warranty. The gold's not. The gold's going to alleviate, you know, probably about half the things that could possibly go wrong with this motor. So that's why... Um, we've only sold like a handful of golds and, and probably 95% of the warranties that we do sell are platinum warranties, either the two extra years or the five extra years. Well, and look, in the grand scheme of things, it's only a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And on a five or seven year boat note, it's 20 oh, yeah. bucks a month or something. Absolutely, and it's yeah. like, well, crap, you got to do that. I mean, you're talking about a $25,000 motor. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So you made a comment when we turned the camera off about the warranty, and it's a good point. So talk mm -hmm. about that. Well, um, on the on the warranty there's no deductible on it so like seven years down the road your motor blows up or whatever the case may be you got you do have to take it to a mercury authorized dealer Ross uh, but there's there's no deductible and it covers parts and labor uh, of course the only thing it really doesn't cover is if you go out and hit a stump or something but that's why you have insurance never happens in yeah. east texas yeah it never never happens. ever ever especially on a raven so talk to me about when i need to come see y'all again okay so no specifically I know I got to change the oil, so right. This is a four-stroke. I got to change the oil. I got to do service. So, what's my next service step with you guys? At 20 hours, then you need to either come back to us or a recommended uh, Mercury facility, and we need to do the lower unit and do the engine oil as well. Okay. And then after that, it'll be whenever you hit hit 100 hours, so 80 80 hours on top of that, 100 hours, and then every 100 hours. Every 100 hours. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, so I don't need to do anything else other than put some gas in it, get some batteries and electronics, That's and I go it. fish. That's it. I bet it's kind of fast right now. Oh, well, yeah. That's, that's so, by the way, speaking of fast, so we're going to start out with a 24-pitch three-blade Fury. That's where we're going to start, and we're going to play with it. Uh, I've got uh, – Ryan and Andrew and I were talking. I'm going to do some load tests before I put all my crap in this boat as soon as we get electronics. We're going to do some load test on this boat to see how putting different loads in the boat impacts the boat, and we're going to do it with and without the, the second uh, second dash. Mm -hmm. I think that dash is going to cost me a mile and a half, two miles an hour, but I'm really curious to see what it is. So you guys stay tuned. We'll get all that done, and uh, I'm really, really happy to be part of the Bass Cat family. It's a beautiful boat. It is a beautiful boat. I got a little teary-eyed when I picked it up yesterday. So. Uh, we're going to go fishing real soon, guys. Guys, a couple of additional things. Uh, first off, I didn't say thanks at the end of that video to uh, Hank and Andrew and uh, Ryan of Ross Motorsports, but you're going to see. We've got another video tomorrow. I thought it would be nice to have some bonus footage of what they do have in stock, so I'll just stick that in on Tuesday as bonus footage for anybody that wants to see it. Uh, also, uh, we will have, so as you've seen, no electronics in this boat. We will have a full video up here probably next week of our time at Jones Troller Motor. And as you know, we mixed our electronics here with Humminbirds and Garmin's, and we're going to talk about what we put on this boat and why. And then last thing, just a reminder, there is the Zavala Volunteer Fire Department Terminal Rayburn this weekend. And uh, you can uh, call that phone number right there if you want information about that, and Thomas will be glad to talk to you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all again soon, and if you don't, Please do subscribe. Thanks.